Well, I was fortunate enough to find a um, full float Chevy rear end um, in 456, which is awesome, and a matching front end. I haven't determined yet if the front end is a Dana 60 or a Dana 44. Either way will be a great upgrade from my corporate 10 bolt. Um, so then I can sell that stuff and be money ahead if I sell them for what I think I can. Anyway, I was able to find the full floater really cheap and it's in pretty darn good shape. Um, I even got one of the emergency brake cables to free up so I'm pretty excited about that because I didn't want to have to buy new e-brake cables. Got one side hub off. Um, I'm just going to freshen it up. I, so far the bearings feel good. Um, Axles are in good shape. I already had the pumpkin uh, cover off just to determine the gear ratio, but I'll have that back off and I'll pull the center chunk and everything. I'm gonna weld the, the differential and get that all put back together and put new seals in it. But so far, pretty good. The rotors look turnable, or I mean the drums look turnable. Uh, I'm gonna need seals, of course, and uh, uh, wheel cylinders um, That's as far as the rear end. I don't know about the front end yet, but it doesn't look in any worse shape So that's good um, So I'll go through How to get one of the sides and axles out of a um, Corporate 14 bolt full floater and Like I said, this one's 456 is which I'm pretty pumped about First you pull these <laughs> They're a half inch bolt, so it's a three quarter inch. My old Matco gun is about on its last leg. I've had it for 20 some plus years and it's maintained pretty darn good strength. Now I'll be able to pull the axle out. It'll have a little bit of gear oil in there, not too much though. <clears throat> Just enough to make a mess if you don't put a little pan under it or a rag. And yes, I'm one of those that always forgets to put the little pan under it. the axle the rest of the way out without knocking my camera off of its little nope gonna have to move it <laughs> I've got this all set up on my motorcycle lift and I just cranked it in the wheel between the wheel vise it's my iPhone uh, Anyway, as you can see, it was between these two uprights of the wheel vise, so I gotta move it. I'll get that pulled out. And I'll fire it back. What are you guys up. working on? Our um, sprint car. Oh, sweet. Very nice. You guys working together? Yep. Wow. That's nice to see. Alright, back to this rear end over here. Get y'all clamped back in my wheel vise. Well, first of all, let me show you. You have to bend what the lock tab out on the lock ring, which looks to me like whoever put this together last didn't bend one of the tabs down in. Hmm. I've never seen that before, and I wonder what their excuse was. Maybe they were drunk. Anyway. Normally, one of these little tabs of this lock ring would be bent down into one of these detents or notches in the outer nut there but they're not 
Anyway, that's what I would have done first. I'm just going to use an old crappy screwdriver to get that backed out. It was actually a little tighter than I like to see them too. Your preload on a bearing doesn't need to be quite that tight, really. In my opinion, that's the way I've always set them up. So we'll pull this outer nut. Lay it down on my sock rag. And then the, the lock ring can come out. Use a little pick. Get it wiggled out of there. You can see the tabs. One of these, one of these tabs should have been. There's enough of them that there should be no time you would ever not be able to index it and keep your spring or your uh, bearing preload to be able to lock one of these tabs down into those notches. Gives you enough leeway there that you should be able to do that, no problem. Then we'll get the inner lock ring. That feels better. A little happier with that. What, buddy? Hey, what'd you get, man? Get a waffle? I want a waffle. inner nut and there should be a spacer come on baby did you say something Chopstick it out of there, I guess. There we go. Little lock ring. You can see the, the uh, tab that goes into the the keyway on the uh, spindle. Now, as long as the brakes aren't too tight, let me make a space to set it down here. Be able to pull the brake drum, which also has the hub on it, and you'll be able to service your brakes. Uh, and get to your bearings in the hub and the seal. And also pour a little gear lube on your shoe. So there you can service your brakes. <coughs> um, like I said, I know it'll need wheel cylinders. I was able to get the other e-brake cable to loosen up and so far on the other one all the mechanicals inside for the drum brakes were in pretty good shape. The the self adjuster was good and lubed up when they put it back together, so it's in good shape. I know this truck sat for a while, but I think the guy took care of it beforehand. And I'll look the drum over pretty well, and like I said, I'm putting new seals in it. I doubt it needs new bearings, but if it does, I'll put bearings in it. Anyway, that's how you get one side off. Both sides are the exact same on the GM full floater and then you can service your brakes 
and outer bearings. When I get to the pumpkin, I'll go over that, how to get that apart and uh, set preload and get it all back in there and get you back on the road. Anyway, I hope you learn. I'm just showing stuff that works for me. Um, don't try this at home. No, do try it at home. I like people to do things themselves and hopefully you can learn something from me. I've learned a lot from guys on YouTube and the old boys I've worked with out throughout the years. So pay attention. Some of it may be useful and some of it may not be useful. Some of it may be detrimental and stupid. And since I'm uh, going to paint this axle, I'll probably wire brush it. I don't have access to a sandblaster right now. Um, I'll pull the backing plate and all that good stuff off like I did on the other side. But really, all you need to do to get the, the backing plate off is these. there's four, uh, four more half-inch bolts to take out. You'll have to loosen up your brakes and get them kind of cocked out of the way. To get to the two behind the uh, e-brake I don't know what you call that expander or spreader or something like that um, anyway that'll get you down to bare flange and everything so you can clean that all up and, and paint well the brake lines are gonna have to be replaced um, even with a fitting wrench I couldn't get those little tiny quarter inch brake line fittings to come loose so I'm just gonna break it off for now and I'll either I'll check out the rest of it but I'll probably just replace the whole thing um, anyway get that broke either loosened or broken in this case then you can tap around the backing plate it's a heavy backing plate and get it broke loose from the flange there